Good morning, folks. We'll begin by checking out that arch and coronal cavity from yesterday. Watch how influential magnetism can be in determining plasma location and coronal emptiness. We actually have a return of flaring, still small scale and still abiding by the earth face in quiet. But folks, there is a rebel. As we come to spaceweathernews.com, we find a 193 angstrom view of our star and a small plasma filament on the south decided he's going to try to release at earth. Indeed, the rope was center longitude on the south, and the snap was fast and hard, but that's only half the CME equation with filaments. The destabilization and snap must be followed by a release rather than a collapse, and while there probably is some ejecta here, much fell to the left and back down to the star. Updates at spaceweathernews.com later today. Combined with that tiny flash we saw top right, that's what our star considers an uptick these days mid-range sea flare only. The rest of the sunspots are not highly dangerous at the moment. Even the big guys incoming are walking into the octagon without any backup and without magnetic mixing. Solar wind here. Telemetry is calming, but for some phi angle shifts in blue up there, which combine with some slight reverberation disruptions from previous storms to create some intermittent field instability yesterday. We expect more solar wind streams in one and a half to two days from that northern coronal hole. It is still producing a low-level earthquake watch, and it is quite massive. The darkness you see incoming at the left side is actually the backside trailing opening of that same northern coronal hole. We won't see the south again for at least a week, maybe more. Alaska's six-pointer is now complemented with one in the eastern Caribbean, way above average there and the watch continues a bit. Top articles begin with the February global temperature update, the remnants of El Nino heat seen in the north, but otherwise it is our normal mix of above and below average periods. Kamchatka down to Antarctica were the significantly cooler longitudes. We've got a paper out of AGU Space Weather on Solar Cycle 24. Good old Dean tracking predictions versus how our star is actually doing. And since this chart is hard to see, I'll turn it sideways. These are all the predictions from highest activity to lowest. Dotted lines are the average of those predictions, and indeed the blue line is what really happened. Way below predictions and way below average. We've also got a terrific article out about the latest triumph of true climate change. For those who are new here, climate change is real. We need to take much better care of our planet, but the one-sided warming story is leaving people without the facts and has resulted in a 0% success rate for climate models on this planet. Unfortunately, when you try to say, hey, let's add some more data, or can we consider the sun as well as pollution, you're labeled a denier, even when you believe in climate change and want to stop polluting. This article is a call for an end to the adult bullying that has become endemic among climatologists. I have also updated the polar fields chart at spaceweathernews.com. Southern fields, still dominating, way more powerful than the north. This had a place in Deeper Look, number 23, posted yesterday evening. It was about the March 2016 electric event that is just winding down now, and of course our fly-on-the-wall hour-long podcast posted to suspiciousobservers.org midday, so there's stuff to watch, stuff to hear. West Coast rain, eastern states taking winter's revenge as astronomical spring stands waiting at the front door. We've got the rest of your pressure and radar forecasts around the globe as well, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.25 a.m. here in the desert. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.